So I, for the last five years or so, ever since the 2008 crash, I've been primarily covering corruption on Wall Street. And this is sort of an accidental detour in my career. I was sort of a typical campaign trail reporter. I covered, you know, left-right politics, elections, that sort of thing. And then after, after the crash in 2008 and after Barack Obama got elected, um, Rolling Stone decided to assign me sort of one story on what had caused the, the crash. And I did one story that was really about what had happened at AIG uh, in 2008. And uh, we got such a tremendous response to, to that story that I ended up essentially doing that and only that for the, ne uh, for the next five years or so. And um, in the course of covering this material, there was this theme that I kept, that kept resurfacing in all these stories that I wrote about, which was that there would be these awful crimes that would be committed and none of the individuals responsible would ever be prosecuted. Uh, the worst case scenario was always the same. It, it was always uh, if the company got caught, which was always a very rare thing to begin with, um, they would either uh, simply promise never to do it again, or they would, in, they, or they would have to pay uh, some money, and it was never out of actually their own pockets. The individuals who committed the crimes, uh, it was you know the shareholders' money, it was the company's money. So I was very struck by this phenomenon of nobody, nobody actually paying a criminal penalty for uh, what almost everybody who covers this subject agrees was the biggest white collar crime wave in American history. And on the flip side of that, it, of course, is we're living through this other part of American history where we have an exploding prison population. Uh, we have uh, this statistics-based policing uh, strategy that's being implemented in, in cities all over America. And so the flip side is it's easier and easier to go to jail everywhere else in America, but it's harder and harder to go to jail if you work uh, in one of these too big to fail banks on, on Wall Street. And so this is what this is the divide that I'm talking about. Uh, there's you know we have some attention that's being paid to income inequality in this country, but I, I wanted to talk about this other kind of inequality, which is justice inequality. Which is you know there's there's one class of people that's essentially non-jailable and another class of people that is jailable.